find this video helpful. Today, we're going to be focusing on my 85 Camaro. Yes, it's an older suspension, but in all actuality, suspension really hasn't changed all that much. Yes, it's, an, it's been updated and upgraded, and uh, in newer vehicles, it can be pretty complicated when it comes to the electrical components of uh, a suspension system. But today, we're just going to be focusing on this because it's very simple, and you'll get the basic understanding of the components and how they operate, and uh, you'll have a better idea of you know, how to find the noise. But the first thing you want to do, whether this is your vehicle or your customer's vehicle, is take it for a test drive. Determine where the noise is coming from, whether it's the front, the back, the right, or the left. Once you've narrowed that down, you can dig in a little bit deeper and figure out what component is worn, broken, bent, uh, what's causing the noise. So I really hope you guys find this video helpful. Also, another thing to remember is Anytime you're working on suspension, most likely you're going to have to lift the vehicle. And you're going to want to use a jack and jack stands if you don't have a lift. Uh, just be safe and cautious and uh, take your time. But keep in mind, suspension components can be a pain when trying to figure out those noises. There's many different noises. You could hear growling, uh, grinding, popping, clicking, lots of different noises. Also, keep in mind that it could be something besides the suspension. It could be a worn motor mount transmission mount, drive line, engine, transmission, lots of different things can make noises. And it's really helpful to be able to tell what the different noises are and where they're coming from. So, let's dig into it. But first, let me go get rid of this Amish beard and uh, we'll get into it. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thank you guys. Alrighty guys, so now that I don't look like an Amish man anymore, uh, we're going to move into kind of some things to look at uh, when trying to diagnose suspension noises. But before you go digging in, say you took it on a test drive and you figured out which wheel it is. Let's say it's this front passenger side tire or wheel area that the noise is coming from. The first thing you want to do before actually digging in real deep is to go ahead and inspect your tire. <clears throat> so you want to look and make sure that there's no dry rotting. Uh, lumps in the tires, uh, weird wear patterns such as overinflation, which would cause more wear in the center of the tire, underinflation on both the inside and outside of the tire, uh, misaligned camber, which could cause wear on the inside or the outside. Uh, it just depends on which way your wheel is tilted this direction. You also want to check toe, which is uh, your wheels either pointing in or pointing out if you have scrubbing, diagonal, scuffs across your tires. Those can all cause weird driving conditions or possibly sometimes noises. So you want to inspect that, but you also want to check the air pressure in your tires to make sure that they're good because that can also cause uh, issues. So go ahead and do that. If you're good there, then you want to take the wheel off and really inspect it to make sure that your tire really doesn't have cancer. And what I mean by that is like tumors in the tire. If you have lumps or bulges in the tire, that can not only cause a rough ride, but you would hear like droning in the car, like wow, wow, wow. The faster you go, the, the louder and faster it gets. So that could be your issue right there. But if your tires are good, then you can proceed to remove the tire. But first, let me get the vehicle jacked up and I'll show you how to test uh, ball joints, worn ball joints, worn tie rod, and uh, bearings, wheel bearings. So it's a real simple test and uh, I'll set it up now for you. Alrighty guys, so we are going to move into how to check for worn ball joints, uh, tie rod ends, wheel bearings, things like that. And this is kind of a simple test you can do. All you gotta do is jack up your vehicle to where the wheel is slightly off the ground. Let's see, sorry about the lighting guys. Got my jack and jack stand under there. So once you have that done, let me move you back a little bit. So the wheel is approximately about two inches off the ground and all you're going to do to check for uh, worn ball joints that are on the A-arms and steering knuckle, uh, basically all you're going to do is you're going to take your pry bar and you're going to slip it underneath the tire and just kind of lift. And what you're looking for 
is play in the ball joints. So if you have a camera, you can set it up to where you can see the ball joints. And I'll show you those later so you have a better understanding. But what you're doing is you're lifting to see if there's excessive play in the ball joints. If they are, that could be your issue. Also, another test you wanna do is you wanna grab the wheel at 12 and six and just kinda of try and shove it back and forth like this. If you can get excessive play, not trying to lift the suspension or anything like that, but just taking the tire. And if you get play like that, you have one components. Uh, it could be your wheel bearing or your ball joints. And then you can go at three and nine and try and rotate. You're not trying to turn the wheels or anything. You're just trying to grab it firmly and kind of give it a nice kind of wiggle back and forth. And if you feel that free play in there where the wheel is wiggling, uh, you might have worn uh, tie rod ends or your wheel bearing as well. If you're driving around and you hear growling or anything like that, it's a very good possibility that your wheel bearings are bad. Uh, and I'll kind of show you where those are located. I'm not going to tear it apart and pull it out or anything, but I will show you where it's located. And uh, if you believe that's your issue, there are a lot of videos on Facebook to show you how to replace a wheel bearing on all different types of vehicles. So now that we've done those tests, we can get this wheel off and start looking at the suspension component. Okay guys, so now we have the wheel removed, that is when you want to really inspect your tire and make sure that you don't have any weird wear patterns or anything like that. And if you do, that doesn't mean just replace the tire and you're good. That means you need to either check the alignment on your vehicle or check for worn components in your suspension because usually your tire is not going to wear uh, awkwardly for no reason. There are rare cases where the tires are manufactured and they just have defects such as the lumps but if it's weird wear patterns then you want to inspect the actual suspension so we're going to start off with the brake system so you have your rotor here you have your brake caliper your brake pads inside and everything is mounted to the steering knuckle and everything like that so i'll show you that here in a little bit but starting off with the rotor uh, a lot of older vehicles or bigger vehicles will have the uh, hub style rotor and that's basically where the bearings and everything are built into the rotor itself which is this disc right here and your bearings are sitting inside of here with some spacers and a lock nut and stuff like that and you access that through this dust cap right here you would pop that off and be careful because uh, it is filled with grease and your bearings are going to be sitting inside of here. I will also post a picture up above of the difference in between a hub and hubless style rotor. So the hubless style, when you remove the rotor, the bearings and everything are gonna stay, whereas the rotor itself will come off individually. Whereas this one is a hub style, so everything comes off with the rotor. Um, and then if it's your wheel bearing, you would just simply replace that, probably with the rotor and everything, just because they, they'll usually come as a unit and it's just better to replace it all while you have it off. Um, then if you're having like dragging noises or scraping or anything, then you want to inspect the brake pads and not just for wear, but you might have a grabbing brake pad where it's stuck and the brake pads aren't releasing off of the rotor. So you might get excessive heat in your rotor as well. So that's one thing to inspect. It's just kind of a close up of it all. And these calipers are held on with usually two bolts, one at the top and one at the bottom. And then it will simply come off and uh, you can inspect a little bit deeper. But that is it for the brakes and rotors. Okay, so next up you want to inspect your shock or your strut, which this is a shock assembly. It's all individual. The strut will usually be the shock with the coil spring around it and uh, you just want to inspect it for leaks or loose mounting points which would be down here on the steering knuckle where you can see this large bolt goes through also at the top of the vehicle you want to inspect this mounting position as well and just make sure nothing's loose there are uh, bearings in that top mount that you want to make sure aren't bad and just inspect for oil or fluid leaking from the shock itself if so then you need to replace that um, on this style the
coil spring is actually on the A-arm, which is this down here. This is your lower control arm. And your coil spring sits inside of it. And then your shock just goes up to the engine bay. So in this style, uh, springs can become weak over time. So if you're having a lot of, you know, sagging on one side of the vehicle, it could be due to a worn out spring or shock. So that is something to keep in mind as well. Okay, so we're gonna move into the sway bar and that is this bar right here. Uh, it basically prevents body roll or excessive body roll and it is connected by a couple, a couple bushings and end link that will go to your A-arm uh, or a similar component depending on your suspension. But it basically prevents body roll and if you're having excessive body roll you want to make sure that these bushings are still in good condition, your sway bar isn't bent or broken, and if you have clicking on turns or anything like that it could be due to loose bushings here if they've given out uh, or if the component is just loose itself. Then moving into the tie rods which is this rod right here and this is your outer tie rod and then you have your adjustment sleeve and your inner tie rod which if you have a parallelogram uh, steering system then it will just simply go to the pitman arm, which is this arm right here, or this is the idler arm, but it connects to your center link and goes to your pitman arm, which actually connects to your steering box, which controls the direction of your wheels. Uh, but there is another type, which is the rack and pinion, which I will also uh, post a picture right up here for you to see the difference. But all in all, one thing you want to inspect is the tie rods. Inner tie rods, outer tie rods, <clears throat> make sure they're aligned correctly, they're not bent, and you have ball joints at the end of your tie rods. If those are worn out, then you would get that movement at three and nine. And keep in mind that a lot of ball joints on the older vehicles will be able to be filled with grease by a Zerk fitting, which you can see right here. But on a lot of newer model vehicles, they do not use serviceable ball joints. They have uh, sealed ball joints, which basically, if the ball joint goes bad, instead of filling it with grease, you simply remove it. Well, I shouldn't say simply, sometimes they can be a pain to remove. But you just simply remove the ball joint and replace it with a new one. But if you have this older style and the boot is in good condition and it's not leaking fluid, say it's just worn out or doesn't have any fluid, the fluid's been used up, uh, you would just simply refill. But as you can tell, it is held on by a castle nut and cotter pin. <clears throat> and it connects to your steering knuckle. And your steering knuckle is what basically holds everything together on the back. So your tie rod connects to the steering knuckle, your shock connects to the steering knuckle. And basically what it does is allows the wheels to be turned, allows everything to move up and down as a unit <clears throat> so you don't have any binding or anything like that. But now I'm gonna go ahead and try and get you a shot of the ball joints on the back side of the steering knuckle. Okay, starting from out here so you can kind of see where I'm going with this, you're gonna go in and this is your A-arm, because it's shaped like an A. And then down at the end of it, where your steering knuckle connects to the A-arm, that is your lower ball joint. And on a double A-arm, where you will have another A-arm up here, along with the one on the bottom, you will have an upper and lower ball joint. But in this one, we just have a lower ball joint, and when you do that test with the pry bar underneath the wheel. This is what you're looking at. You want to set your camera up to see if there's excessive play in that ball joint right there. If so, it will need to be replaced. Here's kind of a closer up look of the coil spring, the sway bar, the tie rod ends, how the shock connects, 
and you also want to make sure that your brake lines and everything are in con good condition. Just make sure nothing's broken, cracked, leaking, binding, pinched, anything like that. Here it is from this side. Okay, one of the last things I want to mention is where the A-arm actually connects to the body back here where it connects to my K-member. It's going to be connected here and on the front over here. Really hard to see, but where the two arms meet the K-member. Uh, there are a couple rubber bushings in there. Just kind of give you a close-up of that. If you have clicking when accelerating or braking, it could be that you have worn bushings on those A-arms, which is basically allowing the A-arm to slightly move back and forth. That is a little exaggerated, but uh, if the bushings are worn out, it does allow play and it can cause clicking when putting the vehicle in reverse, placing it in drive, hard accelerating, or uh, deaccelerating. So uh, those are just some things to listen for. And also, just keep in mind, squeaky components could be due to lack of lubrication or worn out parts. It's all just a game of getting in here and really taking a good look at all of your suspension components and just making sure that they're all in good condition, uh, they're not bent, broken, worn out, uh, it's all lubricated well. It's just a game of, uh, I guess, hide and seek, you know? You gotta find the problem and there's quite a few components down here, but if you get the basic understanding of what the components are and what they do, it's not that bad in figuring it out. It's the job of replacing it most of the time that's not so fun. Alright you guys, so uh, I apologize if you guys can hear that leaf blower in the background, somebody down the block is cleaning their yard. Um, but before we end this video, I also want to explain that this is a rear wheel drive vehicle. So if it was a front wheel drive vehicle, you would have most likely a CV shaft or axle uh, that attaches to the back of your hub and that's what drives your wheels but since this is a rear wheel drive vehicle this is a dead axle and it's just free rolling uh, if you guys want to see a video on the rear suspension of my Camaro and how it works please let me know also if you want to see a more in-depth video of a front wheel drive uh, steering suspension system I will do one on my 2012 Chevy Malibu so you guys can kind of understand the components of that but I will also post a picture of the CV axle up in the corner here for you guys to see so you have an understanding. If those are worn out, you will also hear grinding and similar noises uh, from that as well. So that will be definitely something to check out if you have a front wheel drive vehicle. But if you want to know a little bit more on it, I can do a more in-depth uh, video on that. But also keep in mind that this is a parallelogram steering system which isn't really used anymore so kind of more of a closer up look of it whereas now they either use a rack and pinion which I will post here once again and then a lot of newer vehicles also have electrical power steering which is basically just a motor that operates the tie rods and turns your wheels so that could be a bigger issue if you're having power steering issues. But if you have any questions on that, please let me know. Alrighty guys, so today on Tech Tip Tuesday, we kind of went over the suspension system on a rear wheel drive vehicle. Uh, granted, like I kind of stated, uh, things have been updated and things are a little bit different now, but the basic components are still uh, very similar so you can kind of in this video get a basic understanding of the suspension components and what to look for start off with narrowing it down to where it's at check your tire air pressure all of that remove the tire take a look at your rotors brakes brake system and then move into uh, the actual suspension components such as the steering knuckle the uh, tie rods the 
uh, ball joints, wheel bearings, um, shocks, struts, springs, A-arms, all of those components can all make different noises. Uh, and just by wiggling those components or trying to move them, you can determine if the joints are loose, if uh, the parts are worn or bent, and things like that. So hopefully this really helped you guys. If you want to see a video on the rear suspension, please let me know. If you want to see a video on the front wheel drive uh, suspension system, please let me know, and I will be glad to shoot you guys a video of that. But other than that, anytime you check your suspension system like this, I want to make sure that you know or remember to retort your wheel nuts because the last thing you want to do is go ahead and fix the problem or whatever, or find out what the problem is. Put your wheel on and either uh, fix it yourself or take it to somebody to get it fixed and you didn't tighten your lug nuts and you end up with a much larger issue. So just remember to tighten down your lug nuts to the manufacturer's specifications and uh, you're good to go. But if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please let me know and I will be glad to help. Uh, but other than that, I believe that's it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and as always, subscribe for not a subscriber. Thank you guys.